dreams of you in your navy blue traveling dress. Lying on my unsheeted mattress. Letting a cigarette burn between your fingers. sounds so fucking peaceful. And we keep getting closer and closer and all I want to do is leap to the safety of that unsheeted mattress and wrap my jagged bones around you. So I reach out, hoping to bridge the gap. But just as it seems like you're within reach, the floor gets way beneath my feet. And I wake up.
yourself. You've been so used up for so long. There's hardly anything left but a shell. And I'm sure you've gone through hell just to make it by. But what the absolute fuck has it gotten you? Anything? Aside from not a goddamn thing at all? So tell me, is he really the one? And only? The night had gotten late and had done so very quickly. It surprised me, but frankly, I suppose I was very tired. I just hadn't taken the time to notice. But now it was very apparent to me, lying here, staring at the ceiling. I could feel it pulsing through my entire body, every heartbeat echoing in my head, throbbing. It hurt, but, but in a good way, invigorating and satisfying, like that feeling after Thanksgiving dinner, when you've eaten more food than you have eaten in months, and you didn't pace yourself, and you feel sick, and you can't move, and for some reason you are still washed over with a sense of accomplishment, proud to wear the crown of indulgence. But this night wasn't over for everybody. Not for Alexa.
her night wouldn't have ended until the next night or maybe the night after that. Even lying there and talking, the both of us trying to avoid sleep for as long as we could. She couldn't be still. Restless, I simply watched. It was entertaining. It was endearing. Her tossing about in the bed sheets from one side to the next, trying to find that one spot that would encourage her to calm down, rest, and sleep. She was telling bad jokes. They didn't make sense, but I guess that's what made them so funny. I was laughing after all, partly because of her futile attempts to fight off sleep, but partly because of her jokes. She was laughing too. She knew she was in a losing battle. facing me. She was breathing rapidly but still very softly. I looked into her eyes, but this time I really looked. You look into everybody's eyes. You look into the eyes of a bank teller. You look into the eyes of a mailman. But when do you ever take notice? Well, this time I took notice. I noticed that they were so innocent and they were so full of excitement and bliss like a child. They shimmered magnificently even in the dimly lit room. Like when the sun reflects off the lively ocean, dancing in the middle of a hot day, and there was expression behind those eyes. There was a sense of anticipation, as if she were asking a question, asking, what are we going to do tomorrow night? Have a name, but to use it would be redundant and irrelevant. 
for it is no name with any particular individuality, uniqueness, or poise. If I said it, it would simply dissipate before it ever reached your ear. So, for all intents and for all purposes, he will simply be referred to as the Exploding Man. A man who starts his morning just like he did yesterday, just like he will tomorrow, awakening very rested, having slept for at least eight full rotations of the clock on his wall, the only thing on his wall. And after he's made it to his responsibly well-stocked kitchen, he will pour some of the coffee that's already been brewed thanks to the timer he set on his coffee pot before he went to sleep. He drinks it from a coffee cup that's black with no distinguishing marks. It came as a part of a set, a set of six. They were cute, and they were on sale. It was a great deal. A deal that only a fool would pass up. He takes his coffee with lots of cream and seven sugars. He drinks it while he eats a breakfast perfectly balanced between starches, fats, and protein. Because it is imperative that he performs his very best at a job that brings out his very worst. After he has satiated himself, he must get dressed. His shoes are black, they aren't exactly shiny because he doesn't buff them. But they aren't exactly scuffed because this man, this man who explodes, is careful and watches where he steps. His pants are gray, his shirt is white, his belt is black, and the color of his coat, it, it doesn't matter because it will only be worn on the way to work, where he will take it off on set, and his tie, oh, it's interesting, not to you, but to him. It's kind of a special tie. He enjoys the day a little more when he gets to wear it. He spent time picking it out at a store that he would never really shop at, on a casual basis, not on his salary, but enjoys telling people where he got it, even if they didn't ask, so that they think that he does shop there. It's kind of a special tie. And once that tie is on, and once that tie is straight, this man, this man who explodes, will lock up his one-bedroom apartment and head off to work. And since he lives on the fourth floor and doesn't like using the stairs, and if he doesn't have to, he will take the elevator, where he is faced with the once a week encounter, twice if he's lucky, with her, the lady of the people's elevator. She probably has a name, but this man, this man who explodes, hasn't asked her. She probably lives in this building, but this man, this man who explodes, hasn't asked her. All he can do is smile and muster a wave, and she does the same. Isn't that nice? She is so nice. But even still, the elevator ride will end, and they will part ways in silence. And he will think about nothing other than that elevator ride while he walks to his white American-made car that he bought and used, but he would never notice. And on the way to work, this man, this man who explodes, will listen to the same radio station he has for years. It's really nothing that he likes. It's really nothing that he hates. It's a distraction. Something that is louder than the rusty gears grinding together in the back of his brain, asking questions that he is too afraid to answer, too afraid to acknowledge. So he listens to his radio until he gets to work. He got there on time. Actually, he had a couple of minutes to spare. And so, he worked. Behind four off-white walls, he worked. In a space with no pictures, he worked. Just a desk and a hem, he worked. The only identifying item is a dusty nameplate. Now, to tell you what this man, this man who explodes, does at his job, would we'll be wasting both our time. It's a job that you didn't know existed. It's a job that you didn't know needed doing. And it's a job that you will never want. Eight hours pass, each hour more painstaking than the last. I assume he ate lunch during this time. Most people do. Everything in these eight hours just seems to run together. It's hard to remember what was and was not done. Even when this man, this man who explodes, is driving home, trying so hard, he wants to remember. He wants to reflect on the day. But there's nothing to reflect on. There wasn't anything to reflect on yesterday. There won't be anything to reflect on tomorrow. So instead, he listens to his radio station, which is talking about a health scare. It probably pertains to this man, this man who explodes, but it's vague. It probably pertains to the majority of listeners. But regardless, the facts that they bring up linger in the back of his mind while he sits at home in his chair that he got from one of those outlet stores where there are fields of furniture at really good prices. Sure, they may not be top of the line, 
but they still look really nice. But by now, in the lifetime of this chair, it has begun to sink and form to his body. It's more a friend than a chair. It's familiar, it's welcoming. When he sits down, his body fits like a puzzle piece. It's reassuring. While he sits down to eat his leftovers from the takeout he ordered a few nights ago, that he microwaved back to life. Maybe they're still good. It's kind of hard to tell. There's not much taste passed to the gray scent and the taste of the paper container the food has been festering in. It's not important. This man, this man who explodes, isn't fixated on that anyway. He's paying more attention to the television, spewing sitcoms that all run together where all the plots are the same and so are the fucking jokes. But every time, they still play that pre-recorded laughter. The same one they've been using for years. Who are those people anyway? Are they still alive? I doubt it. I bet these sitcoms are using the laughter of dead people Rather appropriate, I guess, considering the people watching it are just waiting to die themselves. Just like this man. This man who explodes. But he isn't thinking about that. He's a shining example. Using these sitcoms for what their real purpose is. Another goddamn distraction. Something he can mindlessly pay attention to while he drifts in and out of asking himself why none of his co-workers asked him to join them for drinks after work. Or were they sitting at home, like he was, doing the same thing? It wouldn't have mattered. He wouldn't have gone anyway. Because he has to work tomorrow. He needs to rest. Which, it's almost time for. It's getting late, after all. And this man, this man who explodes, needs that eight hours. So this man, this man who explodes, can get up tomorrow and do it again. Just like he did yesterday. Just like he did today. Just like he will for the rest of his life. Until the day, the day when this man, this man explodes. A letter to John D. Johnston. Charleston day before yesterday, I learned that you are anxious to sell the land where you live and move to Missouri. I have been thinking of this ever since, and cannot but think such a notion is utterly foolish. 
What can you do in Missouri better than here? Is the land any richer? Can you there, any more than here, raise corn and wheat and oats without work? Will anybody there, any more than here, your work for you? If you intend to go to work, there is no better place than right where you are. I want to be a king. I want to break away from everything they ever told me I could be. 
Life, life, life is hard enough. Life, 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 life is hard enough. 